President Rodrigo Duterte vetoes the Coconut Farmers and Industry Trust Fund bill because it may violate the Philippine Constitution. Meanwhile, the chief executive also vetoed some parts of the general tax amnesty bill. Rosalie Cos tells us why. In violation of Article 6, Section 29, Paragraph 3 of the 1987 Philippine Constitution, the provisions of the Senate Bill No. 1233 and House Bill No. 5745, this is President Rodrigo Duterte's reason for vetoing the Coconut Farmers and Industry Trust Fund Bill. The Constitution states that all money collected on any tax levied for a special purpose shall be paid out for such purpose only. However, under the Coconut Farmers and Industry Trust Fund Bill, the 76 billion peso coco levy fund collected from the coconut farmers during the administration of former President Ferdinand Marcos shall be utilized to create the trust fund. President Duterte had just vetoed last week a bill that will reconstitute the Philippine Coconut Authority or PCA, citing that only the Congress would have an oversight body over the PCA and will be in charge of the annual 10 billion peso fund, making it susceptible to corruption. The chief executive also argued that though the enrolled bill is part of the Duterte administration's legislative agenda, the provisions of the Coconut Farmers and Industry Trust Fund bill do not reflect the government's goals to utilize coco levy assets and funds for the benefit of marginalized coconut farmers. The president still hopes the Congress would continue to work with the executive branch to formulate another relevant bill that would be acceptable to all. Meanwhile, the president also partially vetoed the tax amnesty bill, particularly the general amnesty provisions. Ayo ayo niya na general tax amnesty. Hmm, bakit po? Eh, kasi nga, <laughs> that will encourage them not to pay taxes in the future. Kasi, anyway, meron naman general tax amnesty pagdating ng panahon. President Duterte has appealed to Congress to pass another general tax amnesty bill that would include the lifting of bank secrecy for fraud cases, the inclusion of automatic exchange of information, and safeguards to ensure that asset of net worth declarations are truthful. Rosa Licoz, UNTV News and Rescue, Malacanã. Coconut farmers expressed disappointment after President Duterte vetoed the Coco Levy Fund bill. They challenged the chief executive on his campaign promise to enact the bill. Grace Cousin tells us why. Eduardo Mora, who hails from Quezon Province, shares how tough it is to work as a coconut farmer. Eduardo's parents are both coconut farmers and he learned to yield dried coconut meat or copra from them. His family sells copra at 13 pesos and 50 centavos per kilogram. Oftentimes, however, they loan capital to be able to produce copra, one of the major product of the Quezon province. Ang condition lamang doon, papautahin kita, pero yung copras mo, sa akin mo ibibinta. Yun. Di, pag uh, yung copras ko sa kanya ibibinta, huli na niya ako. Kung ang presyo halimbawa ng kopras tulad ngayon ay 1350 raw isang kilo, sabi sa Quezon, kung ako sa kanya ay may utang, pwedeng pababae niya ang presyo ang bilis sa akin. Kung normal na bintang halimbawa, Tracy, na napakababa ngayon, pwedeng bilis sa akin ng 10 peso. Coconut farmers just like Eduardo have expressed dismay as President Rodrigo Duterte vetoed the Coco Levy Fund bill last week. They had all been expecting that the 74 billion Coco Levy Fund would help them in their livelihood. The Coco Levy Fund is fund collected from coconut farmers during the time of former President Ferdinand Marcos. In 2014, Supreme Court decided to release the fund to over 3 million farmers in the country through a law. Labis kaming naiinis sapagkat uh, nangako si Pangulong Duterte dun sa katanawan nung nangangampanya pa siya. Ang pangako niya sa loob ng sandaang araw, pagkatapos niyang maupo sa tungkulin ay kanyang uh, ibibigay sa mga magsasaka ng nyug itong coconut levy na matagal nang pinag, uh, pinagahangaran ng mga magsasaka sa nyug na mapunta sa kanila sapagkat ito'y tunay namang para sa kanila. Di po makatarungan, di po makatotohanan, at uh, wala pong sapat na pinagbabatayan yang pagbito ni Pangulong Duterte. 
Coconut farmers are planning to conduct a bill protest to condemn the president's move. For coconut farmers, the Coco Levy Fund is their only source of financial help in their livelihood. To have them capital in their business, not just for copra production, but also in yielding other coconut products. Grace Cassin, UNTV News and Rescue, Quezon City. Malacanang ensures the provisions of the rice tariffication law are enough to protect the welfare of the farmers, including the allocation of the 10 billion peso every year for the Rice Competitiveness Enhancement Fund, which includes farm mechanization and seedlings for farmers. The rice tariffication aims to remove the limitation in the rice importation of private rice traders from other countries but have to pay the 35% tariff. Some farmers say they will lose their job if rice importation in the country will be liberalized. May mga safeguards yun na mapuproteksyonan din sila. Prices of basic necessities and prime commodities increased based on the Department of Trade and Industry's latest list of suggested retail price. Monoxon tells us why. The prices of some basic goods include the prices of some basic goods included in the Department of Trade and Industry or DTI's latest suggested retail price list have gone up. Almost all varieties of milk have increased price from 50 centavos to 1 pesos and 20 centavos. These milk varieties include condensed milk, evaporated milk, and powdered milk. The price of a known powdered milk brand, for instance, which used to be sold at 57 pesos, has increased by 6 pesos. Manufacturers of canned sardines have also increased their products' prices by 40 centavos to 1 peso and 70 centavos. The prices of iodized salt brands have also gone up by 50 centavos to 2 pesos. A price hike can also be noticed in one brand of detergent soap which is now sold at 75 centavos more. Meanwhile, there is no movement in the prices of 3-in-1 coffee brands, bread, instant noodles, bottled water, candles, toilet soap, and batteries. The DTI, for their part, said these products with increased prices have had pending applications since last year, when the department implemented the three-month hold-off on price increase. Ah, pinipilit natin talagang iba pa ang presyo as much as possible na kung pwedeng mag-roll back eh. But because of the uh, the three months hold off period, hindi tayo maka-roll back ng presyo. So, and DTI makes sure na kung hindi talaga justified ang reasons nila for increasing their prices, hindi natin ipapa-increase talaga. According to a consumer group, however, the application for price increase is contrary to the Duterte administration's target of 2 to 4 percent inflation rate this year. Laban Consumer President Vic Dimagiba said that as many products have increased prices, even more than the 4 percent target is possible. Dapat po kasi tutok ang pamalaan, no? Kung may target tayo, target to yun sa lahat, no? It, kung may pagtaas presyo, lalampas na naman tayo sa 4 percent. So ano pong ating naging lesson learned? Of the 264 products listed on the suggested retail price list, only 59 items increased their prices. The price hike has taken effect since last Wednesday, February 13. Mon Hokson, UNTV News and Rescue, Quezon City. President Duterte signs into law the Social Security System Rationalization Act. The law aims to give SSS more power as well as to increase the life of the state-run pension fund. Through this, SSS can enhance its capacity of generating better income for the benefit of its members and pensioners. This is by increasing the monthly contributions gradually from the current 11% to 15% in the year 2025. This year, the higher SSS contribution will be implemented, and this does not need the President's approval. JJ the Fast Helter brand played as if he can still lead the Inebra San Miguel team over their past rival, the Pure Foods team. Meanwhile, the triggerman Alan Kaidik played big with the San Miguel team to defeat Alaska in the PBA Legends' return of the rivals game yesterday. 
Vincent Arboleda tells us why. Miller launches to Durantes. The pass. Oh. Miranda breaks it up. Oh. Johnny Grace the counter. Miller. And listen to this crowd. Enjoy the moment. Durantes played. Oh. The big dome was filled with thrill as the legendary players in the Philippine basketball history showed their fans what they've still got on the hard court in Sunny's night, the return of the rivals' benefit game. As the crowd made noise in the Alaska versus San Miguel bout, the Alaska Aces led by one point in a slow and friendly first quarter, 21-20. And in the second quarter, the Alaska team intensified their triangle offense with the San Miguel Beermen tailing behind by eight points. The first half ended at 40-32 in favor of Alaska. But in the third quarter, the Beermen stole the lead, 62-59. And in the fourth and final quarter, with both teams eyeing for the win, the game just got even better. The triggerman, Alan Kaidik, continued to fire up with four more three-point shots raining down against the Alaska Aces. And as the final buzzer of the ball game went off, San Miguel won 96-83. Alan Kaidik was hailed as the best player of the game with 26 points, including six trays. Salamat ako unang una sa lahat ng mga sumuporta. Nakita mo naman yung mga old fans namin nandito. And it's more than the result, more than the, the physical play, saka yung kung sinong nanalo at natalo. Yung solidarity talaga ang nakakatuwa. At nakita namin yung mga old, uh, yung mga followers namin, pamilya, yung old team supporters. Ando, nakakatuwa. Reunion talaga. On the other hand, the Alaska Aces was led by Willie Miller who bucketed 21 points, and Johnny the Flying A, Abarientos, who recorded a double-double, 11 points and 11 rebounds. The feeling is, ano, uh, parang bumalik yung pagkabata. Eh. The, the starting five, it, it took them like two, three minutes before they got into the group. Tapos yung mga nasa bench, sabi nila, oh, it's getting, it's, it's coming back, coach, it's coming back, parang karoon na amnesia, bumalik na yung triangle ulit. Like, that's after that, they, they were having fun. Masaya, enjoy. Maraming tao. Uh, hindi kasi galing sila noon, pero masaya pa rin. Uh, parang reunion. Eh, nakatulong din uh, for a cause, di ba? Tsaka uh, nakakamiss din yung nanonood yung mga maraming tao. And in the Hinebra versus Purefoods clash, the big dome crowd got even noisier with fans cheering for the Manila Classico. Got into good business. Oh, the fast JJ Halberbrand and Vince the Prince Hizon were both hailed as the best players of the game as they led the Jin Kings to a win against arch rival Pure Foods. Marlou the skyscraper Aquino also contributed 15 points together with Dolly the Tank Loxin with 14 points and Bao the Flash David with 12 points. The Purefoods team on the other hand was led by Roger Yap with 27 points together with Paul Artadi and Tony Boy Espinosa who both bucketed 14 points. Purefoods head coach Ramon Fernandez couldn't help but reminisce the good old days. Dito na rin tayo naging senior citizens sa court na ito, no? Of course, uh, it's nice to reminisce on those days. But uh, what is really more important is the fans enjoyed it. We did it for the fans and to help our less fortunate colleagues. Each winning team received 100,000 pesos plus other prizes, while each best player of the game received 25,000 pesos and additional prizes. The players are thankful that the PBA Legends exhibition match for the cause was a success. Uh, the rivalry talaga lives on and uh, no, uh, bless kami at natuloy ulit to. Uh, this is for the crowd, for the fans, tapos syempre sa PBA Legends Foundation. Hope may part two, babawi kami. <laughs> syempre, nice kong magpasalamat sa UNTV, Kuya Daniel, uh, sa tulong na binigay niyo po sa, sa amin at sa mga nangangailangan. Vincent Arboleda. UNTV News and Rescue Philippines.
Old-time PBA favorites consider last night the return of the Rivals exhibition match a success. Nel Maribok tells us why. The greatest players of all time of the Philippine Basketball Association or PBA returned to the hard court Sunday night in a one-of-a-kind basketball for a cause event. Basketball fans and PBA supporters did not fail to witness their all-time, all-time favorites to dribble, pass and shoot the ball at the Big Dome. The four big rivaling PBA teams, Alaska vs. San Miguel and Ginebra vs. Pure Foods, battled in the return of the rivals, a project of the PBA Legends Foundation. Magandang at hikain na makalikom ng pera para makatulong sa mga dating mga manlalaro na medyo pag dumating may karamdaman, may, may pangangailangan at ma, ma, matutulungan natin sila. UNTV led by its president and CEO Kuya Daniel Razon gave the PBA Legends Foundation 3 million pesos after the two hardcourt matches. The Legends expressed their thanks to be a part of the charitable endeavor. Siyempre, para rin uh, makaipon to, para makatulong tayo sa iba. Ito rin yung mas, uh, masarap, uh, masarap na pahiramdam. And lalong lalo na Manila Classic ang, ang, ang game ngayon. Thank you sa UNTV, PBA for a very successful return of the rivals. Baka dumating na kami naman na matulungan eh. So, ibibigay namin lahat na makakaya namin sa makatulong kami sa foundation namin. It's um it's just nice to be a part of something na parang we're giving back to um to our fellow players, ex-players. And uh, this is a very worthy cause na naisipan nila ato and nila Alan. And um, big uh, Big kudos to them, congratulations to them, and for UNTV, for Kuya Daniel, for being a part of this whole program. And I know this is only the beginning. According to Kuya Daniel Razon, supporting the PBA legends does not end here. Ang ating uh, ginawa ngayon dito sa Return of the Rivals ng uh, PBA legends is uh, pagsuporta natin doon sa kanilang foundation na tinulungan din natin na ma-organize ano? at uh, sa awa ng Diyos na umpisahan na nga yung kanilang uh, foundation and then after that, itong ang follow-up project na ito para uh, magkaroon naman sila ng funding para dun sa mga um, dating mga manlalaro ng basketball na kailangang tulungan sa medical assistance at iba-iba pang bagay na pwedeng uh, maitulong sa kanila nung mismong uh, foundation ng uh, uh, mga basketballista. The concept of creating a foundation for retired basketball players began in 2015. It was introduced in a charitable game between the PBA Legends and the UNTV Cup All-Stars in April 2015. The game was a fundraiser to give assistance to Avelino Samboy de Skywalker Lim Jr. who slipped into coma after collapsing in a game in November 2014. UNTV gave 1 million pesos to the foundation as assistance for Samboy Lim. It was followed by another 1 million pesos which Kuya Daniel Razon gave us seed money of the samahan ng mga dating professional na basketballista ng Pilipinas which is now called the PBA Legends Foundation. Win or lose, though rivals on the hardwood, the PBA legends were able to show their unity, collaboration, and solidarity which can never be withered by time. Nel Maribuho, UNTV News and Rescue, Quezon City. Up next on Y News. Fuel prices set to go up again this week. It was the first time uh, when I tasted the Philippine food uh, and I think it's uh, perfect and uh, I enjoy it very well. And Russians enjoy first ever Filipino restaurant in Moscow, Russia. Thank you for keeping me company in the first part of One News. More reasons behind the stories with Angelo Castro III and William Theo after this quick break. I'm Rina Villamor Camara. Good evening.
Welcome back to Wine News. We pick up from where Rina Villamor Camara left off. I'm Angelo Diego Castro III, and here are the headlines. There are some places uh, kung saan, sa palibot ng common poster area, kung saan bawal, punong-puno ng poster, pero yung common poster area, wala naman. The Commission on Elections is set to issue this week a notice of violation to candidates with illegal campaign posters. A large number of overseas Filipino workers' families still without bank savings according to data from the Banco Central ng Pilipinas. And a video of MMDA footbridge with tangled telephone and cable wires goes viral. The Commission on Elections will send this week a notice of violation to candidates in the 2019 midterm elections with illegal campaign posters following the poll body's inspection. Aiko Miguel will tell us why. The Commission on Elections or COMELEC have been documenting violations of candidates in the May 2019 national and local elections in the country, particularly infractions on the rules set on campaign posters. This week, the COMELEC Education and Information Department or COMELEC EID is set to send letters or notice of violation to election officers to inform them of those candidates with illegal campaign posters. Katatapos ng documentation namin, um, sa ngayon hinahanda natin yung uh, pagbabaklas. But at the same time, hinahanda na rin yung mga sulat doon ng mga kandidatong na monitor natin na merong mga malalaking billboard at malalaking poster. According to COMELEC spokesperson James Jimenez, the most common violation of senatorial candidates and party list groups is posting of campaign posters beyond the designated common poster area. There are some places uh, kung saan sa palibot ng common poster area kung saan bawal, punong-puno ng poster, pero yung common poster area wala naman. So that should tell you that the most common violation really is posting out of place. Comelec added that they have monitored more illegal campaign posters of local official candidates than those of national candidates. The poll body reminds that although the campaign period for candidates for local positions begin on March 29, the candidates must take down their campaign posters that violate election rules. Election officers have already been given their respective tasks on this issue. Yung mga election officer um, para magtanggal ng uh, materials and then yung regional director para ma-inform yung candidates. Magkakaroon ng evaluation doon sa, sa regional at sa local offices no, to determine kung nagkaroon ng compliance doon sa warning, doon sa sulat. Meanwhile, an estimate of 1.2 million ballots to be used in the overseas absentee voting, which will be held from April 13 to May 13, 2019, have already been printed. The ballots will be sent to voting stations, consulates, and embassies in countries with Filipino voters. The National Printing Office has been operating around the clock, and printing has been underway for ballots that will be sent to Mindanao. Aiko Miguel, UNTV News and Rescue, Manila. Oil prices are expected to go up starting 6 in the morning tomorrow. According to industry players, the prices of diesel and gasoline will increase by 70 centavos per liter, while kerosene price will go up by 35 centavos per liter. There has been an increase in the price of ethanol, a component in making oil products, the Department of Energy said. Aside from this are the different geopolitical aspects that affect the price of crude oil in the world market. A video of a footbridge with tangled telephone and cable wires located in Mindanao Avenue in Quezon City is making the rounds online. The Metropolitan Manila Development Authority or MMDA clarifies that the footbridge remains close to pedestrians. Joanna will tell us why. After the controversial footbridge dubbed as Stairway to Heaven, as the structure is too high for pedestrians to cross the road in Scout Borromeo, Quezon City went viral. Another footbridge, this time in Mindanao Avenue in the same city, is making rounds online. This video shows the telephone and cable wires lying on the bridge's floor. The video that has gone viral was uploaded by a netizen last February 14. It has gained more than 1.2 million views with almost 17,000 shares. Hey, wires. 
cable eh. MMDA Traffic SAR Colonel Edison Bong Nebriha explains that the footbridge was supposed to open last January 30. But since utility companies have yet to remove the telephone and cable wires tangled on the footbridge, the MMDA decided to postpone its opening. Nebriha said that the wires had been existing there even before the construction of the footbridge began, but the contractor just ignored them and continued with the project. The traffic SAR further explained that the MMD and utility companies have discussed plans to remove the telephone and cable wires within this week. Having notice of cutting cables to the utilities, nakikusap lang sila. Nakikusap sila na kung pwede, bigyan sila ng one more week. So, binigyan namin hanggang Thursday ngayong Thursday, di ba? Okay. If not, kami na magpuputol. The contractor has placed barricades and yellow ribbons around the footbridge as an indication that the footbridge remains close to the public. The MMD said they suspect that the video uploader trespassed on the footbridge only to take a video footage and make an issue. Because of this, the MMD calls on the public to refrain from trespassing on MMD footbridges, especially if they remain close to the public. We upload that in yan, para lang sabihin na napaka irresponsible ng mga ahetsya na gumagawa niya, hindi po mali po yun. Dahil po ito, hindi po namin nga namin bubuksan na may mga kapil dyan. Uh, Sisiguraduhin po namin, naligtas po yan sa mga the MMD is yet to determine the date when the footbridge would be open, but the agency assures the public that they are working on removing the telephone and cable wires on the footbridge. Joe Anano, UNTV News and Rescue, Quezon City. The Pasig River Rehabilitation Commission fast-tracks its cleanup of Esteros in Manila City in connection with the government's Manila Bay rehabilitation efforts. Nel Maribohok will tell us why. Noria Gimbas family is among the households dwelling along Estero de San Miguel in Manila City. Some 50 families are residing on this side of the Estero. Noria admits how hard their situation is and added that they have no choice but to stay in this place. Dati, sinabihan na talaga kami na i-relocate. Eh, yung iba, tapos na yung iba hindi pa. Tulad ko, wala hanggang ngayon nandyan pa. Kung ako naman ang pipiliin. Gusto ko dito muna eh kasi nag-aaral yung mga anak ko dyan sa Heronimo eh. It is noticeable that most of the houses here have no proper waste disposal and garbage is thrown into the estero. This waterway leads to the Pasig River. And this is one of the esteros in Manila City. The Pasig River Rehabilitation Commission or PRRC continues to improve. The PRRC said that through the Manila Bay rehabilitation efforts, fast-tracking the cleanup of esteros in Manila is possible through collaboration with the Department of Public Works and Highways. Lahat ng rehabilitasyon sa Ilugpasig ay makaka-apekto rin kasi sa rehabilitasyon ng Manila Bay. Kaya naman, very particular na rin ang DNR sa mga pag-improve natin mga waterways. Meanwhile, the government is expected to address the issue on the relocation of informal settlers in Manila City, particularly those living along Esteros. Nel Maribuho, UNTV News and Rescue, Manila. Banco Central ng Pilipinas data shows that only 35.5% of overseas Filipino workers have savings, while only 5% of them turn their money into investment. Here's why from my my Bermudez. Sheila de los Santos is a hired helper in Saudi Arabia. The mother of eight said she sacrifices to work overseas all for her children. She shares that she usually has only three hours of sleep every day, while the rest of the day is spent at work. Despite this, she admits that until now, she and her family still have no savings or any bank account. Hindi na rin kasi kailangan yung pagkadasahod ko, lumilipad din dito yung pera Sheila's family still dreams of having their own house. Data from Banco Central ng Pilipinas show that only 35.5% of overseas Filipino workers or OFWs have savings and only 5% of them turn their money into investments. The same data also show that 98% of the families of OFWs spend much of the remittance they receive on food and daily expenditures, while only 2% of them save up money. 98% talaga ng families. Kung ano yung nare-receive nilang remittances, ini-spend nila talaga for uh, ginagastos nila, meaning to say. So that's where yun yung sinasabing walang 10% uh, 
for the families yun kasi sila yung beneficiaries of the remittances. Observation namin, mas nakaka-cope dun sa distressful situation ng naudlot yung kontrata, kailangan kong bumalik. Yung mga nakapagplano, nakapag-impok, nakapag-invest. At yung mga hindi nagawa yun, yun yung talagang nagsastruggle and therefore need to cling to government programs, basic services. Financial experts advise a Filipino worker abroad that 10% of his or her income must be allotted for savings, while an OFW's family in the Philippines must also save 10% of the remittance received. It's also important to set goals, such as eyeing to have a car or a dream house to become inspired in saving up. Learning to invest in business is also essential. Avoid loaning large amounts of money or even borrowing through the 5-6 money lending scheme. If business is not your thing, better learn another skill to still become employable when the time comes you need to return to your motherland. Siyempre, yung savings, uh, yung savings mo, ilalagay mo sa banko, siguro savings account. Pero, dapat hindi mo iiwan doon. Dapat uh, uh, i-invest mo ito sa iba't ibang instruments. No? My Bermudez, UNTV News and Rescue, Manila. Russians have a way to enjoy Filipino cuisine right in the heart of Moscow. Nino Armilio will tell us why. Moscovites, workers and tourists enjoy the Filipino food right on their plates, served in a Filipino restaurant seated in Moscow, Russia. Restaurant owner Michael Angara shared how the idea of putting up a Pinoy resto in Moscow came about. Kasi una, uh, naisip ko dahil wala sa Moscow, uh, walang isang kahit isang Pilipinong uh, cafe, fast food or restaurant. Michael also shared that during the startup, being granted a permit for his business was not a piece of cake. Even the tough competition with established restaurants in the city has been a challenge. Mahirap uh, dahil unang una walang Filipino products mostly here. Pangalawa, hindi kilala yung Filipino cuisine dito sa Russia. Despite these, Michael has been able to get the resto running, together with a fellow cook, who is also a Filipino, and a Russian business partner. The Filipino restaurant offers popular Filipino dishes and snacks that include kare-kare, shrimp or prawn sinigang, bulalo, okoy, lumpia or spring rolls, and chopao. So it was the first time uh, when I tasted the Philippine food uh, and I think it's uh, perfect and uh, I enjoy it very well um, because it's um, not, it's rather unusual for Russia uh, to see this Philippine. Philippine is rather far from here. It's a beautiful place, I know about it. And the, uh, the food is also the beautiful, the same as the islands. I taste uh, Ukoi. I know that's um, also local, very nice. Uh, it's the uh, shrimps. Filipinos working and living in Moscow are glad that they can enjoy the foods their palates surely miss. Feeling ko na sa Pilipinas ako ang sarap sarap ng bulalo at yung bangos. Super, ang sarap. Wala akong masabi. Masarap ang pagkain nila. Very affordable po sa bulsa natin. Wala talaga akong ibang Masasabi kundi tangkiliki nyo po. According to Philippine Ambassador to Russia, Ambassador Carlos Soreta, the establishment of the Filipino restaurant can help bring Filipinos closer to the heart of Russians. Malaking bagay ko ang magagawa nito dahil uh, madami na hong, uh, although mada, tayo po isa na isa lutog bahay, uh, masashare na natin sa mga Russians, sa Russian society, ang ating mga putahe, ang ating pagkain, at uh, ito lahat ay palagi ko ay uh, lalong tataas ang tingin uh, at appreciation ho sa atin ng ating mga kaibigan dito sa Russia pag natikman nila ang ating uh, pagkain. Michael is overwhelmed that even Russians enjoy what they serve. Masarap po sa pakiramdam dahil uh, naisishare ko yung hindi lang yung pagkain, yung kultura natin, yung pagiging hospitality. Uh, tsaka yung mga products na nakikita, naka-display dito. It's part of uh, 
introducing uh, Filipino culture. This Filipino restaurant began to open its doors last February 1st. It serves daily from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. local time. Nina Armilio, UNTV News and Rescue. Up next on Y News. Australia accuses foreign government of cyber attack on lawmakers. China pilots Internet Plus nursing program to assist frail patients at home. It's hard to rank, you know, everything is special. Uh, but it's cool to uh, be out there with some of the best players that ever played the game. And Kevin Durant named most valuable player as Team LeBron rallies for NBA All-Star win. And those are the reasons behind the stories in the second part of our newscast. Y News returns with William Theo. Amang Alokas, the third good evening.